All right, and good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Community Bible Church Online. Things are going to be a little bit different right now because let me tell you what's happening. This is being recorded a couple days before Sunday because I am out of town. You will be seeing a message that I'm giving specifically to you that they will not be getting at 11 o'clock at the regular service in person. In fact, they're going to be treated to Andy Stanley this morning, and you're going to get me only for one reason. We will be violating copyright laws if we were to stream Andy Stanley. So you've got me this morning, and I'm going to be talking in just a few moments from the book of Matthew, chapter 15, and it's called Inside Out. You'll understand what we're talking about in just a few moments, but I'm going to give you a chance to get that scripture up, either out of your Bibles or on your iPads or however you're watching the service this morning. But I'm glad that you've joined us. The guys are in here. We're going to be doing this uh, special for you uh, this morning. And so I want to ask you to turn your attention to them right now as we begin to worship the Lord together. Now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. One day every tongue will confess you are God One day every knee will bow Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now Come, now is the time to worship Come, now is the time to give your heart just as you are to worship Come Just as you are before your God Come Willingly we choose to surrender our lives Willingly our knees will bow With all our heart, soul, and mind and strength We gladly choose you now Now is the time to worship Come Now is the time to give your heart Oh come Just as you are to worship Come Just as you are before your God Come just as you are, come. Just as you are, come. Just as you are, come. Amen. All right, and again, we're glad that you've joined us online this morning. We're so glad that you are here and that you are connected. Make sure you're there in the chat room. You are talking with one another and encouraging one another and make sure that you say hello to one another this morning. Not much has changed. You're just not watching the live service from Community Bible Church this morning. But nonetheless, we are here with you and I'm glad to be here with you this morning and hope you've had a great week and that we have a great rest of the day today. A couple of things that I just want to remind you. Thank you again for your faithfulness. I feel like I say this every week, but I don't think I can say it enough through this difficult time. We keep hearing more tragic stories of churches closing, of businesses closing, of so many different things, and yet you have been so faithful to us, and we so much appreciate that, especially during these difficult times. And so, uh, again, people, I need to keep mentioning, because it's the virtual plate at the door, if you will, our text to give is one 781 one five nine nine. All you have to do, people have said. I know people have tried to call the number. You can't call the number. All you got to do is just type that number, the eight seven 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 eight one one five nine nine, in your little text box, and then 
just text the word give to that number and you'll get automatic text back that'll tell you exactly what you need to do it's a secure platform so if you'd like to take advantage of that and that's easier for you uh, we wanted to let you know about that so thank you again for joining us a couple of different things again we're doing some couple of uh, of different platforms we've shifted things around a little bit we've been doing 30 at 7 30 on YouTube we're going to continue that for the time being our real live broadcast there's actually two of them occurs Sunday morning we're usually streaming live and then also Tuesday morning on the Tuesday morning brew with Bob what we need you all to do with on all of these platforms is to hit that little button that says share also when you get an email from us on either Sunday or Monday sometime, uh, there's an opportunity to share that email with other people. So I want to encourage you to make sure that you forward the email because there's folks, a lot of folks, who may want to see what's going on and we kind of lay out everything that's happening. So you'll be receiving that either later today or tomorrow morning. You'll have that email with all of our links in it. And you can always go back to that link because we put the service up service link for next week up for you right away for those of you that are watching online. If you're going to be with us in person or you're thinking about coming back in person, we are practicing social distancing. Additionally, uh, masks are required. If you don't want to wear a mask, uh, then just continue to watch us online for the time being until all of this uh, gets worked out. We're not sure when that's going to be, but we're just going to keep plugging along and doing our thing. We feel like we can continue to keep everybody safe, so we want to thank you for that. Again, continue to uh, pray for us, pray for your fellow folks in the church. If you know anybody that has a need, please let us know. If you want to stay in contact with us, uh, make sure that you send us your email address to info at cbcfl, Community Bible Church FL, the abbreviation, info at cbcfl.org, not .com, .org, and make sure if you want us to text message you and to send you uh, some of our updates via text, make sure that you give us your phone number in there, and then that also gives us permission all the way around to email you and also to add you to that other list. So please keep in touch. If there's anything that you need, anything you know about anyone else, let us uh, know and let us know about it. Also, uh, stay tuned to our Facebook page. We're getting some other updates on different meal programs and things that are available. So we're going to make sure that we get those out to you as we are able. So in just a few moments, guys are going to come back, but in just a few moments, we are going to be in Matthew chapter 15 talking about inside out and you'll see what that means in just a little bit but Matthew chapter 15 but right now please join us at home as the guys come back to lead us in our continued worship songs this morning where you go I'll go where you stay I'll stay when you I'll move, I will follow All your ways are good, all your ways are sure I will trust in you alone Higher than my sight High above my life I will trust in you alone In you alone Where you go I'll go Where you stay I'll stay When you move I'll move I will follow you Whom you love I'll love how you serve, I'll serve If this life I lose I will follow you Yeah I will follow you Yeah Light into the world Light into my life I will live for you Where you stay, I'll stay. 
say when you move I'll move I will follow you whom you love I'll love how you serve I'll serve if this life I lose I will follow you yeah I will follow you Everlasting in you, there's freedom for my soul. In you, there's joy, unending joy. And I will follow where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you, yeah, I will follow you, yeah, I will follow you, yeah, I will follow you. We are going to follow our God to the ends of the earth, whenever that may be, whatever that may be, and there is no one like him. We will worship him, our almighty God. Let's go ahead and conclude our worship this morning. I worship you, almighty God, there is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what I want to do. I give you praise, for you are my righteousness. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, Almighty God. Oh, there is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. And that is what I want to do. I give you praise, for you are my righteousness. I worship you, Almighty God. Oh, there is none like you. I give you praise, for you are my righteousness. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. There is none like you. Oh, there is none like you. All right, and we are so glad again that you've joined us this morning. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 15 this morning. Uh, there's quite a few verses, but I'm going to focus on, on, on just a few of them here in just a few moments. We're calling this Inside Out, and you, again, you'll get what that's all about in just a few moments. But before that, let's go to the Lord. 
Father, thank you that we could be together both in person and online today. Father, we pray for those who are meeting uh, in Community Bible Church right now. We pray that you will bless and encourage them and that the message will be a blessing to them there. Father, I pray too that you will uh, make the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts acceptable in your sight today. Oh God, our strength and our redeemer. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Many of you know that have known me for a long time that I actually grew up in sort of a fundamentalist Baptist background. And so we had fundamentalist Baptist pastors that we listened to. And I remember they, they didn't always sit well with me. But I remember one time I was uh, listening to one and there was a, a friend of mine brought back the t- it was a cassette tape from this pastor seminar. And so there were some pastors was there, and evidently one of the pastors had his hair like over his ears and had a little bit of longer hair than you normally had back then in the churches. And there's literally the pastor that is speaking, who was well known at the time, starts yelling at him and says to him, don't amen me, boy, you get your hair cut and look like a man. And I said, what happened to the rest of the people that were there? Because that's when you want a video to see everybody go <gasps> and gasp. And I thought to myself, that's what's wrong with the church. That was what was wrong with fundamentalism, what's wrong with evangelicalism, and what's wrong with this this whole mess that we sometimes call the church because I think what happens is we know that people are a mess, but then when we come in the church, we're not allowed to be a mess. We know that people are often putting forth a front on the outside, but inside they could be torn apart. And that's why when we talk about the church and we talk about a relationship with God, it's not an outside-in thing. It's an inside-out thing. And that's what I want to talk with you a little bit about this morning because there are so many folks that are judgmental that are out there. By the way, this very pastor that was judgmental, years later it came out. So many things that were so horrific that it happened that were proven that it was ridiculous and the entire legacy was lost. But meanwhile... He was focused on how long somebody's hair was. It's a tragedy, but it doesn't have to be that way. And that's our story today here in Matthew chapter 15. I want to give you a little bit of background because what has happened in Matthew, of course, as we've talked about before, is the gospel uh, to the Jews. It is presenting Jesus as the king of the Jews. And so he's dealing a lot with the Pharisees. Now, I will challenge anyone because people talk about Jesus confronted sin. The only time Jesus really confronted sin was with the Pharisees who used their religious position, their money, and their power to wind up trying to manipulate somebody else. And so Jesus goes after them. He calls them broods of vipers. He calls them all kinds of names. And this particular account that happens, it's actually two things that happen in this passage of Scripture, but they are connected by our theme. Now what happens is, and we'll jump to chapter 15, verse 1, and some of them are going to read really, really fast. Some of the Pharisees and teachers of the religious law now arrive from Jerusalem to see Jesus. And they asked him, are you ready? I think you're going to ask him, hey, are you the Messiah? Hey, are you the one that's promised? Hey, you know, who are you? Give him a chance to talk about the big stuff. Nope. They asked him this. Verse 2. Why do your disciples disobey our, listen to these words, age old tradition? I want you to get that. And you can underline that, mark it, memorize it, do whatever you have to do. The Pharisees asked Jesus, not are you the Messiah, not are you the promised one, not are you the big one, not are you the guy. Why do your disciples, your followers, disobey our age-old tradition? Are you ready what it is? For they ignore our tradition of ceremonial hand washing before they eat. What? Are you are you kidding? Now, it's not it's not the thing, you know, like we tell our kids, you know, wash wash your hands before you eat. We're we're really into that today. Everybody's hand sanitizing everything because if this was a, a ceremonial thing that they did. I mean it was a, a purification thing, but it was also ceremonial. And so they were not following this tradition. And so the the Pharisees, who are the religious leaders, they're the people that are supposed to have it all together. They're supposed to be the people that are leading the religious folks in Israel. They're supposed to be showing them who God is. And they want to know from Jesus, 
Why are your disciples not following ceremonial hand washing? It's kind of like, why are you not, you know, uh, why are your disciples sitting on this one side in the church and not the other? Why are you not following the tradition of playing this type of music or having, or people wearing these kind of clothing? Why are they not doing that? And that gave Jesus a chance to unload because he saw what they were doing. Notice what he says. Jesus replied, here, and why do you, by your traditions, violate the direct commandments of God? Whoops. So you're worried about ceremonial hand washing and tradition, and meanwhile you, the religious leaders, are violating the commandments of God. He says, for example, God says, honor your father and mother, and anyone who speaks disrespectfully of their father and mother must be put to death. So Jesus goes for this, this big one. I mean, he goes for a big command. And they say, but, but you say it's, it's all right for people to say to their parents, sorry, I can't help you right now because I vowed to give to God what I would have given to you. So what I have, what you guys are doing is you say, oh no, I can't help you, mom, dad, financially because I vowed to give this to God because see, what it is, is their behavior sounds spiritual. Their behavior sounds like they got it all together. They looked the part, they dressed the part, they got it all together. They, they're presenting this, but meanwhile, they are directly disobedient to God. And he says, in this way, you say they don't need to honor their parents. And so you, get this, cancel the word of God for the sake of your own tradition. And then he says, listen to these next two words, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, for he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they are teach man-made ideas as commands from God. Now this, this is big stuff, because they start this conversation with Jesus and say, by the way, your followers, they're not practicing ceremonial hand washing. And Jesus says, by the way, you religious leaders, you are directly disobeying the commands of God. So what say you now? He looks at them and says, you know what? Isaiah was right about you folks. You worship me with this, but your heart, whoops, this, inside, your inside is so far from me. It's, it's not even close. So you're honoring me by washing your hands and you're going, see, we're doing ceremonial hand washing. Look at us. Don't we look good? And meanwhile, your heart is so far away. So Jesus then uses this as a teaching opportunity. And this is where I want to spend some time. He then calls a crowd to come in here and he says, listen, and try to understand this. And I want you all to hear this today because I, there's so much out there. There's so much out there about what's good for you, what's bad for you, what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing. If you're a good Christian, you'll read this, you'll listen to this, you'll watch this. Listen. It's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. Oh, he says, you all are worried about what you're eating. You're worried about what you're drinking. You're worried about all of this stuff that you're putting in as a religious thing. Because if you're religious, you're not going to eat this meat. You're not going to drink this. You're not going to do this. You're not going to do that. And he says, meanwhile, you are defiled by what's coming out, by the words that you're speaking. Why? Because of the, well, the Pharisees were hypocrites. They were basically lying. So the disciples, they don't get this. They're trying to figure this out. <laughs> So listen to what they said. I love this. The disciples, they came to him and they said, do you, do you realize that you offended the Pharisees by what you just said? That is so great. Uh, hey, Jesus, listen. I just want to let you know. Uh, are, are you aware of the fact that you just ticked the Pharisees off? Are you aware of the fact that what you just said totally offended them? Jesus doesn't even answer that. He says, listen, every plant that's not planted by my heavenly Father will be uprooted. So, ignore them. Ignore them. They are, have you ever heard the term, the blind leading the blind? I don't even know whether that's politically correct to say today, but this is where it comes from. He says, they are blind guides leading the blind, and if one blind person guides another, they will both fall into a ditch. 
He's not taking a shot at blind people. The point is, if you can't see, then how are you going to guide somebody else to see? You both are going to go on the wrong path. You both are going to fall in the ditch. It's that old bumper sticker that says, don't follow me, I'm lost too. That's, that's the idea. He says, look, the, just you've got to ignore these people because they are a blind guide. And what good is a blind guide? It's like, it's like taking a, a tour somewhere and you say to the tour guide, well, where are we going? Well, I don't know. This is my first time and I've never been this route. Okay, that's not the tour guide that you want. Okay, and that's, that's what he says is, look, these, these folks are blind guides. You've got to ignore them because they're judging you. And, and you say, well, what's the big deal? Because here's what happens. When somebody judges you and they tell you, you need to do this or you need to do that, we often step in and we comply and we say, that's right. If I'm going to be a good Christian, then I need to act this way. Or I need to act that way because so-and-so told me so, because my mom told me, because my dad told me, because my pastor told me, because somebody else told me, because I heard this in my tradition a long time ago. This is what's going to make me effective. This is what is going to make me a follower of Christ. I've told so many of you growing up, we weren't allowed to go to movies. We weren't allowed to drink. We weren't allowed to smoke. But everything else was okay. It was like, it was ridiculous, the things that we're focused on. And yet, people thought they were spiritual because they could check off the box and say, went to church? Check. Read the Bible? Check. Didn't, didn't drink? Check. Didn't smoke? Check. Didn't dance? Check. I checked off the boxes. And Jesus said, that's not what this is about. It's not about checking off the boxes. So, of course, Peter has to speak up, as always, and he says to Jesus, would you please explain this parable that says people aren't defiled by what they eat? Because he's still not getting it as a Jew. He's like, we... But the law says we can't have certain things. The law says we're going to be defiled. And so Jesus says this to them. He goes, do you, Peter, do you not get this yet? Anything that you eat passes through the stomach and goes into the sewer. The New Living Translation is being very, very um, proper in how they're saying this. It's the, probably the, the best way to say it without getting more graphic. He's, he says, look, what you eat passes through the digestive system, and it winds up in the sewer. But here it is. But the words that you speak, they come from your heart. Now, it's interesting because different cultures have called the, the seat of the soul, uh, they've looked at different things. One said it was the, the bowels in your stomach. Others say it's the heart. And that's what Jesus is referring to here as the heart. It's the inside. It's your soul. It's who you are. And he says, don't you know that you are going to speak out who you are? This is the problem. When people say you have an anger problem, you do. But it's not because you're spewing off here. It's not because you're... Because I've dealt with anger for years. It's in here. The stirring up, if you ever get angry, it starts in here, and then it comes out. And that's what he says. He says, look, this is what defiles you. But he says, for from the heart, from the soul, in here, get this, come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, Lying and slander. And then he says this. These are what defile you. Not eating with unwashed hands. That will never defile you. He said, you know what? Y'all are worried about the movies. You're worried about the music. You're worried about the pews. You're worried about all of this different stuff. You're worried about all the checking off all of these boxes. But meanwhile, inside, you're dealing with immorality. You're dealing with bitterness. You're dealing with slander. You're dealing with anger. And those are the things that are causing the problems, not this other stuff. Why? Because what happens is people judge folks on the outside. And when, when we talk about the racial issues that are going, it's because it's an outside thing that we're focusing on. And we're not looking that people are people. They are all born. We are all born in sin. It doesn't matter what our culture, what our race, it doesn't matter any of that. And we're all a soul, a person who God loves, and a person for whom Jesus died. It doesn't matter what I'm wearing on the outside. It doesn't matter what culture that I came from. It doesn't matter how I dress. And to prove that point, 
the next thing that happens is the most remarkable. And it's the rest of this. And let me show you what happens. We, it's all connected. But people miss this. They miss the conversation and they separate it out. But watch what happens next in Matthew. Then Jesus left Galilee. And he went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Verse 22. A Gentile woman. All right? Just stop right there. Remember, Jesus was the one, and Matthew is the one that records, that when they first went out, the disciples first went out, Jesus said to them, you're going to go as, you've got to be wise as serpents, harmless as dove, you're going to be like sheep in the midst of wolves, and he says, please be careful, you're going to go two by two, and he says, when you go, don't go into the way of the Gentiles. So this message of that the kingdom is here is not for the Gentiles yet. And don't go into any city of the Samaritans. He said, I want you to go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that's what's in their mind right now. In their mind is, is that, oh, this is only for Israel. Because it wasn't until the end that Jesus said, you know what? Now I want you to go make disciples of all nations. And the Jewish disciples still miss that even over in the book of Acts. It took, it took God to kit them through persecution finally around chapter 8 to get out to the Gentile world. And constantly the disciples were asking him, why are you talking to the Samaritan woman? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? So it's a Gentile woman. Now watch what happens. Gentile woman who lived there came to him pleading, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. Did you get that? Gentile woman. She recognizes him. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, i.e. Messiah. For my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments, tor torments her severely. Now you can almost think Jesus you just stop there. You could imagine what Jesus did, right? Oh, this poor woman. Please, woman, come to me. And No. Jesus gave her no reply. Not even a word. The disciples were probably thinking, yeah, Gentile. What's she doing here? In fact, they did think that because it says, then his disciples urged him to send her away. Because Jesus doesn't say anything, doesn't reply. She's begging. She's calling him Messiah. She's a Gentile woman. They all know it. And what happens? Nope. He doesn't say a word. The disciples think, yep, that's right. It's not for her. It's for us. Tell her to go away, they said. She is bothering us with all her begging. So then Jesus said to the woman, no, come here, no. Listen to what he says, verse 24. I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. I, you know how we think of Jesus, just, he healed everybody, he was always gracious to everybody. No. Now, it's clear he's making a point. Because what he's just told the disciples before, what was the last lesson? It's on the inside what defiles you not what's on the outside. See, the Pharisees wanted, were concerned about the outside religious stuff, but the disciples were concerned about the outside religious and political affiliation and race. Jesus said, I'm like, the disciples are probably going, yes, knew it, this is great, slam the Gentiles, they're dogs. But she came and worshipped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. Now this is almost a pathetic sight because her, her child is possessed with a demon and now she's begging Jesus and he hasn't answered her. And then when he looks at her, he says, listen, I'm, I didn't come to heal folks like you. I came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she cries again and says, Lord, help me. And then he says this. It isn't right to take the food from the children and throw it to the dogs. Now remember, they looked at the Gentiles as dogs. And rem we've talked about this before. Being a dog was not a great thing. They, weren't, they didn't get their teeth brushed. They didn't wear little sweaters and things like that. They were, they were maligned. And she, he literally refers to her around about as a Gentile, as a dog. He says, why should I take the food that's for the children, the Jews who are sitting at the table, and throw it to the dogs? This is getting bad. I love what the woman says. Jesus is testing, testing. He's proving a point. And then he says, she says, that's true, Lord. 
But even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath the master's table. She goes, I, I get it, Jesus. And I may be a dog, but even the dogs are allowed to have the scrap. Can you just give me a scrap today? That's all I'm asking for. I love this. Jesus looks at her then and says, Dear woman, your faith is great. Your request is granted. And notice what Matthew says. And her daughter was instantly healed like that. You look at that and you say, man, Jesus was, Jesus was mean. Well, I don't imagine that he was doing it. I mean, I could almost imagine him saying it to the woman and then looking over to the disciples like, yes, what are you guys going to do? You guys are watching this, right? Because again, here were the Pharisees who kept over and over and over again judging people. The Pharisees, as the religious Jews and the religious leaders, they judged the Gentiles. They judged the Samaritans. Remember that in the temple there was even the court of the Gentiles and you couldn't go past that. And so Jesus was hitting right at the elitism to let them know that it's inside out, it's not outside in, that God looks on the heart. And how many times do we see that? All the way back even to David. All the way back to, 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 to after Saul, that they chose Saul based on how he looked, and he was head and shoulders above everybody else. And because he looked so good, they chose him as king, and God stripped the kingdom from him. And then when Samuel went to try to see who was going to be the next, the, the, the next leader of Israel and the next king, he went after his person, after person, after person, all of Jesse's sons, all of them who looked good. And God said, God said to Samuel, Samuel missed it. Because God doesn't look, I don't look on outward appearance. I look on the heart. It's on what's on the inside that counts. If you want transformation, if you want change, stop keeping a checklist. In fact, if you, you could put it like this, if you want to be on the right side, you've got to start with the inside. If you want to be on the right side, you can't start with the outside. It's got to start with the inside. We, we fix the outside because it's easy and it's not messy. I can just stop doing this and start doing this. And once I do that, it's fine. I can tell you, I've been on a weight loss journey and it's not an outside thing. It's, it's all up in here. It's what goes on inside here. It's what goes on between your, your ears and between your thoughts. So how do we change the inside? Because it's messy. The inside is messy because you know inside your head and inside your heart and inside your very being, there are secrets, there are challenges, there are conversations that you have with yourself, there are things from your past, there are things that people have said to you that have told you that you're worthless and you're nothing and you're never going to amount to anything. And every time you try to do something, those things come back up and they affect what you're doing on the outside But because it's on the inside. And there's the things that you don't share, the things that you don't tell anybody else, the things that are so deep. And yet, if change is going to start, it has to start there. It, honestly, that was the whole point of why Jesus came. Because he starts with the inside job. I, I, think, it was a, I think I heard from the Imperials the first time, years ago, when they were talking about 2 Corinthians 5.17, and then I confirmed that the Imperials were right with the original Greek. When it says that if any man's in Christ, he's a new creation that literally translates and means a new species of being that's never existed before. That God, when we embrace Christ, starts a new thing inside of us. He starts a new creation. He starts things all over again. But we often stop the process because we focus on the outside and not on the inside. I heard a story years ago about a captain of a ship. And the whole idea was that he could look out and the waves could be crashing and the ship could be rocking and rolling and, and, and just pitching and doing all of the things that it does, hitting every kind of wave, but he would go to the bridge and if he went to the bridge and he checked all of the, uh, all of the different instruments and everything was okay, then he knew they were going to be okay. But he started from the bridge. It's a view from the bridge. It's a view from what's going on inside. So how do we continually change 
what's on the inside. Well, we have to change what we're thinking about. You know, when everybody says that's, it, that, that is so much easier said than done because you got conversations going on, you got things that are going on in your head, and you have to direct that. There's an old, uh, uh, the, the old word meditation. When you hear the word meditation, people are like, oh, you know what you're talking about? It's an om, om, that kind of stuff. That's not what it is. Meditation in the Bible literally was talking about somebody that was talking to themselves. It's, it's so funny because if I'm driving down the street, I love having Bluetooth now because I will talk through sermons and things. But it used to look like I was just talking to myself in the car. Now everybody's got Bluetooth, so they think I'm talking on the phone. And I can still be talking through the sermon. But I will talk through things when I'm alone. And that's a form of meditation. That's, that's, why, you know, that's why God told Joshua, don't let any of this depart out of your mouth, but, but uh, out of your heart, but meditate on it day and night and observe to do all that is in it. There are constant challenges from the scripture to us about meditating on the right things, about reading and reflecting and, and, and memorizing and repeating and constantly choosing to think about those things. When those thoughts come up of anger and of rage and of all the other things, start to think about scripture passages. Think about what would Jesus do. It starts from the inside because it's on the inside is what makes you go up. On the inside is what allows you to become all that you can be. But change starts here. It's on the inside. That's what counts. There was a story of a, many years ago of a, a balloon salesman. He was at the circus. And in order to get people to, to come towards him, every once in a while he would take a balloon and would release it into the air. And so the kids would say, oh, mommy, mommy, I want to go, I want to go get a balloon. I want to go get a balloon. And so the kids were around him, and this is what a very similar times, very racially tense time uh, in our country. And this little African American boy went up to the went up to the guy, and he and he he touched him, and he said, "Mister," he said, "If you let go one of those black balloons, will it go up?" That man had a pivotal moment, and he got down at the little boy's level. And he looked him in the eyes and he said, of course it will, because it's what's on the inside that makes it go up. That is so true. It's what's on the inside that counts. And I have to tell you today, if you want to be on the right side, focus on the inside. Be who he wants you to be and everything else falls into place. Will you bow with me in prayer? Father, thank you that we could be together today uh, online. Father, I pray that you will help us to focus on the inside. Help us to realize that this is an inside game, that it's a mind and a heart game, and to focus our attention on the things that matter. God, make us more like Jesus. Help us not to judge people on the outside and, because everybody's got a struggle and a story that they're going through. Father, make us more like Jesus this week. And may we release the grip and allow you to do the work that you need to do on us. And we'll thank you for it in Christ's name. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And you're going out and you're coming in and you're lying down and you're rising up in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us today at Community Bible Church. We'll be back next week, and uh, we should be live streaming live next week instead of a premiere like we've done today. But thanks for hanging in there with us, and we'll see you next week on our various social media channels. Make sure that you also watch for the emails today. God bless you. Love you. See you soon.